Welcome children to the Skyview Middle School broadcast on Friday, February 23rd. I'm here with Allie, Chase, and me, Mason. Hey Allie, what day is it? I don't know. Woohoo! It's Friday. Here's the scoop on the Taste of Europe. While we're talking about that, Mason, what's your favorite food? Oh, uh, what did, I don't know it exactly. Anyways, let's go see what Hunter and Lexi are doing. What's wrong? Why do you look so sad? Because I want European food and I don't have any money to go to Europe and get European food. Why don't you just go check out the Taste of Europe in the 7th grade hall? Great idea! Wait, what is Taste of Europe? Taste of Europe is when students make food similar to what Europeans eat. Kids go around and eat all the other European foods other kids made. Crepes, pretzels, butter biscuits, stew, thumbprint cookies, and pot stickers are only some of the dishes some students in the past have made. Hi, I'm here with Ethan Smith, and I'm going to be asking a few questions about Taste of Europe. So, how would you describe Taste of Europe if someone hasn't, um, like, doesn't know what Taste of Europe is? Um, well, this was kind of new for me, and I'd like to describe it like as basically just trying new foods that I have never known. Hmm. Um, what was the most fun part about it? The most fun part for me was probably just talking to my friends because just. Oh, I could be like, it's in the Minecraft on your feet. Okay, and then what did you make and what inspired you to make it? Um, I made a Dutch butter cake, and what inspired me to make it was my great grandma because we'd always cook together. Thank you. Hi, I'm here with. And I'm going to be asking her a few questions about Tasty Europe. First question, what was the best part of Tasty Europe and why? To me the best part of Tasty Europe was eating all the food after we like all made it so you could try new foods. That sounds really delicious. How did Tasty Europe help your understanding more about Europe? Like it helped me understand like what they ate and make this like a little bit easier to understand. Okay. And final question, is there anything you want to tell 6th grade about Taste of Europe because 6th grade is going to be doing it next year? Uh, make sure you do your, like make the food at last minute so it doesn't like get old or stale. And then like do your research first, it's pretty easy. Thank you. Taste of Europe has been going around for a couple of years now. Taste of Europe was on Wednesday the 21st. This activity allows these wonderful students to get a taste of Europe and the type of food that different cultures bring to the potter. I am so much happier. I can tell. I can't wait for next year. You won't be here next year. Thank you, my goodness. Thank you for that European food. Hey, Chase, would you eat all those foods? Yeah, that looks great. Anyway, Madison, Maddie, and Kat are doing a segment on floor hockey. Coolio, Coolio. What even is floor hockey anyway? It's hockey on the floor. Jeez. That's just cold. Get it? Cold hockey is in cold weather. Shoot it anyways, girls. Hi, I'm Madison, and today we are going to see Mr. Burrell and his students play floor hockey. Let's go. Floor hockey is an indoor hockey game. Similar to ice hockey, players on each team attempt to shoot a ball or puck into the goal using sticks. A goal is scored when the entire puck or ball crosses the goal line. Unless it is intentionally kicked in, the team with the most goals at the end of the game is the winner. So I've never heard of field hockey before. My favorite thing about floor hockey is probably working with um, my team and scoring goals. It's a lot of hand-eye coordination, so it's kind of hard to it's a, it's a hard game to play. Uh, what I don't like about it is sometimes the kids, uh, they swing their stick too hard and it hits me in the shin. But it's fun to play at the same time. It's not hard. It's pretty easy. Floor hockey originated in Canada while the British soldiers were stationed there in the 1950s. The first game was in Michigan in 1962. That's all for floor hockey. Back to you, Anchors. Wow, that was great. Let's go see if there are any photos of hockey in the slideshow. Can we talk about it first? That slideshow was awesome. We didn't watch it yet, Mason. Anyway, have you... Tubular. Can we just get to the slideshow? Let's go look at this.
How many photos was that? A lot of photos. I think there are two photos. You're being ridiculous. Don't be rude. Anyways, have you ever wanted to take care of your grandparents? Yeah. Well, my grandparents have way too much fun. Well, then let's see what they're doing. Are your grandparents run down? Do they need help? Are they physically challenged with this world? And if they are, we know your solution. So, I lost my grandfather at a very young age, and I've been having to help my grandmother out a lot, and old timers has helped a lot with this. I used to have to do her laundry, make her bed, make her meals, but now that I have this, um, I can actually walk around, I can go out and hang out with my friends and not be worried about anything. I wake up in the morning, preferably at four o'clock, four o'clock, and I make them a full course breakfast, including bacon, eggs, and pancakes. In the afternoon, I rub my special green, old timers, and it makes them feel young again. They sit on the couch and watch TV while I make them some soup, mainly chicken and dumplings. They love the chicken and dumplings that I make because it is homemade. At night, I took them in at bed and I make them chicken for protein. And I read this book to them. Don't read this book before bed. They enjoy this book because they don't understand it. Thank you. Bye. Old timers, buy it now at 1-800-677-8. You children need to stop. Now I can actually take care of my grandma. I can't. They live too far away. Hopefully they don't get murdered. Hopefully. Speaking of murder, the next story is about murder. What? You just can't listen. Anyways, let's go see the next story. That was crazy. I know, that was pretty cool. I didn't see that coming. That looks like something you'd see on Investigation Discovery. What's that? It's a TV channel about murder mysteries. Next up, a new segment called Eagles on 3 has Maddie interviewing Miss San Giorgi about her time in Peace Corps. Who's Miss San Giorgi? Let's find out. Janine Sandrogi got the deal of her life by going with the Peace Corps to Thailand in 1990. Janine was 17 years old and she won a trip by writing an essay about global awareness. In 1989, um, there was a snowstorm and um, in New York, where I went to high school, they didn't necessarily shut down schools like they do here in Colorado. So I went to school because my mother forced me to. and. Um, there was this essay contest going on, and that was the deadline, was that day that the snowstorm was, and I didn't anticipate participating in this essay contest. But a social studies teacher came to me and said, hey, Janine, why don't you take this time and write an essay on global awareness and see where it goes? So I did. The next thing I know, I was part of a three-person group interview with a, a bunch of Return Peace Corps volunteers. So in this group interview, with my peers, um, they were asking some incredibly difficult questions, and um, I thought I had—I didn't think I had a chance. Uh, one of the people that I was interviewing with, his parents worked for the UN, so I was like, "Oh, there's no way I'm going to get this." But as the uh, questions came about, I realized that this really was a good fit for me, 
and then um, I got selected. In May, Janine was on a trip to Thailand for two weeks. She landed in Bangkok and spent half a week there. Then she went to Cha Ching Sao for the rest of the trip because she got sick. We visited for two weeks, and an interesting thing about that is we were um, we started off in Bangkok, which is the capital of Thailand. And if you were to walk around Bangkok, you would think this is an incredibly rich country. But they seem to invest all of their money into the actual buildings in Bangkok. You walk out of Bangkok and everything is pretty much, um, it, it's poor. No running water, no electricity. Um, I went to a village called Cha Ching Sao and stayed with uh, my Peace Corps volunteer for one night and then um, I stayed with the homestay family for um, a couple of days. We were supposed to go um, to the northern border uh, near Laos and um, I got incredibly sick. In fact, we think I may have had cholera. While recovering from her sickness, she got to stay with her home family who took care of her while she was getting better. She got to experience the hospitality of the Thais while staying in Cha Ching Sao. And I got to actually experience the hospitality of Cha Ching Sao, um, which was quite an experience because imagine being incredibly ill, going into a hospital and not knowing how to say help or tell them what hurts not knowing what's wrong with you. And in fact, I had a fever that was high enough that I actually hallucinated. So that was a pretty scary experience. Um, but then I spent the rest of the uh, week and a half in Cha Ching Sao with my homestay family. And that was an interesting experience in itself because I thought the mother didn't want to stay around me. She, she would always give me soup. <laughs> she would know, check my fever and make sure I was well hydrated. And then, and then she would leave. And eventually I asked the Peace Corps volunteer, I said, did I offend her? I mean, she's not staying near me. And she said, no, you didn't offend her at all. She's embarrassed that she doesn't know English well enough to talk to you. And that was an eye-opening um, realization. The Thais believe that laughing makes people recover from their sickness. So while Janine was recovering from a deadly sickness, everyone was laughing at her. Thailand experiences a problem with human trafficking. Unfortunately, Janine had to experience part of it firsthand. At a bus stop, a man came up to her Peace Corps volunteer and asked if he could buy her. They have a currency called the bot. So um, these are a few of the coins. And it was it's an incredible exchange. I don't remember exactly what it was, but I know that you could have a night out on the town for like the equivalent of four US dollars. After two weeks of her being in Thailand, Janine had to go back to the United States. Part of the purpose of going to Thailand was to bring their culture back with her. Janine Sanjorji completed the purpose of her trip by coming here and sharing it with us. And they wanted to make sure that the people they were sending didn't already have their uh, biases cemented into their personality. And they, uh, they being the Return Peace Corps volunteers, believe that 17 year olds, that was a perfect age for someone to be mature enough to represent the United States of America and to, um, to really show the ties what, um, what it was like. So the purpose was for me to live in Thailand as the ties do um, and then bring that culture back. They wanted my seat to be open for two weeks so that students would ask, where were you, what did you do? Thanks, Maddie. Wow, being in Peace Corps sounds fun. Yeah, it does. Miss San Georgie is really nice. Yeah, she is. Anyway, I wonder what's going on in the school. I think school is where you learn stuff. Not that, what's going on in the announcements? Well, let's figure it out. Hello, Skyview. Our tree and murals are on February 26th to March 8th from 7 to 7.30 a.m. in the Little Gym. Please pick up a form outside the gym if you're interested, or see Mr. Marino or Mr. Moore if you have any questions. There is a maximum of 36 participants, so hurry up. We love to play 60 activities for February. On February 28th from 3 to 4 p.m., there is a cooking activity in the CFS room. You are cooking healthy pizza. Please sign up on the Bandron door today to participate. There are limited spaces available. Thank you very much with the announcements. That was pretty cool. I'm sad the broadcast is about to end. I know. Well, that's why it'll be one every week. You think it's time? Yeah. See you people in the next broadcast. Bye!